Hello, this is Jon Kobold from EMD. Uh, in this video I'll show how you can uh, create visualizations on a video uh, using uh, WinPro Photomontage and Animation and uh, After Effects. As you can see here, I have a, a video I've been taking. Um, I had my uh, video camera put on a tripod, so it's standing perfectly uh, still. And now I want to uh, render some uh, PV panels in this area over here and also I want to put in some uh, rotating VTGs and uh, I'll just show you how you can do that. So here I have loaded uh, After Effects and this is an empty project and then I'll just take the video file I have recorded and drag and drop it into the application and then I take it like this and put it down here to create what is called a composition. Now I want to take uh, one frame from this video. Uh, you can see here the video is running like this. Uh, I want to take just a random frame from this and use this in uh, photomontage. So uh, I just take any, uh, doesn't matter where I am in the video, but I just want to have it uh, for calibrating uh, the photomontage. Then I go into composition and I say save frame as file and then it opens the render queue and here I then press the Photoshop button and I save it as a JPEG sequence and then I press OK and then I run the render queue. So then it's saving the file. Uh, I didn't select the file, but you can see here if I click here, it says where it, it puts the file right here in this uh, my working folder where I also had the video. And you can see now it created this uh, file. Already before I uh, did that uh, with another file and I loaded this uh, file into um, to WinPro and use this for setting up uh, a camera. So um, as you can see here, I put in a camera object at this position and uh, I already calibrated the, the photomontage like uh, normally. Uh, and you can see I also uh, did uh, add some uh, rubber here and, and in this place and I added some aviation lights on the on the V2 VTGs I have out here. So now if I turn on the, the PV layer and render this, right now you can see uh, that it put in some panels here and I use the rubber tool to make sure that uh, these poles are in front of the panels and not behind them and I also did some rubber work over here and I have some aviation light and uh, these tubes are in front of the panels also. So now um, what I'll do here now I want to export this uh, to After Effects but first I go into the camera setup and I go to the photo and uh, instead of rendering on the photo up here, I render on a background color. And um, here I make sure that the background is set to the same uh, size as the image I was calibrating the photo with. So I just say OK. So now I could actually render the photo here and use this uh, in After Effects. But since I want rotating VTGs, I instead of uh, create an animation. So I go into the animation uh, module and then I just want high quality. You should uh, be aware of the number of frames is being enormous here. And since I'm rendering uh, both aviation lights and um, uh, PV panels, then it's quite slow for each uh, image that is rendered. I can set this down to 30 frames and uh, perhaps also I could change the quality just uh, uh, slightly a bit here. 
So now I just say create and uh, then it asks me for a, a file name for the animation. And I'll just call it animation one and press enter. So obviously this took a little time, but now uh, it has created this uh, file animation one. So I go back into After Effects and then I drag drop this uh, new uh, file down here. And then you can see it goes on top of the existing video. And here you can see it is uh, a video uh, where uh, everything, is, the background is blue. And uh, here you can see where I use the rubber tool. And now I just want to make the blue parts uh, transparent. So I, I do that. First I select uh, the layer and I go into the effects menu. And there's uh, something called keying. And I say, I, I select this one. There's a lot of different ways to do this. And um, I select the effect that's called uh, color range. So uh, sometimes it pops up here, I haven't quite figured out when and when not, but it uh, also comes down here. And if I double click on it, it opens up this uh, window where I can use this one to select which color I want to make transparent. And I do it like this. So this is extremely uh, easy to do. So now actually I can uh, press uh, space and I can see how uh, the video looks like. Depending on your computer, this may uh, be lacking a bit, but uh, on, on my computer it runs mm, almost. I can turn off the, the, the sound of the video down here. And uh, you can see here, this is the length of uh, the animation I created, and the, down here, this is the length of uh, the background video. And I am a little um, unhappy about that there's not uh, too many cars in the start of the video down below. So I think I will uh, just try to make it start a place where there are some uh, more cars. And then I will also fit the length of uh, these two uh, video sequences so they have the same, same length. So what I do now is, is press space to stop the the video and then I just go to where there are some cars coming in the background I think about here and then I uh, change the the beginning of this I hold shift down and then it snaps and then I drag this and again I hold shift down and it still snaps I change the end of this one hold shift down to make it snap and I do the same thing here, hold shift down, and then I right click up here and say trim composition to working area. And then it uh, just did so. So now I, uh, I'm actually ready to, to render this for uh, my final result. And I do that uh, using this option. and export it to Adobe Media Encoder Q. So, it uh, may take a while for uh, opening this uh, program, but here you can see it put in a line, and this is uh, the thing I want to uh, encode. And, and you can see here you can select the output file, it uh, comes up with some default, and then it, uh, it, here you can select the format you want to export in. This is uh, MP4 format. And uh, when you select it, whatever you, you want to, how you want to set it up, I'll just select a new uh, different uh, name for it. This is uh, my test, so I just overwrite that one. I'll call it uh, yes, animation 4, that's fine. And then I, uh, I start the encoder by pressing this button. Okay, uh, this can also take uh, quite a long time, but uh, when it's done, it looks like this, uh, and you can open uh, the, the folder where you put it, uh, or you can click here on uh, this link. And uh, here it is, I can try and see how it looks. So, that's it. 
But now in a few seconds you can see one of the problems you might uh, run into. There you go. So you can see that uh, there was a car going in front. Uh, the car is going in the... Uh, it should have been in front of the panels, but the panels are in front of the car, of course. And that is because um, uh, the way I, I didn't mask out this part, of course, and it's also, it's you can see it's uh, dynamic, it's changing frame for frame. It's a different part of, of, uh, of the animation here that should be masked out. So uh, to overcome this problem, uh, you should... Uh, there's many ways you can, to, you can fix this in After Effects. And it's called uh, masking and if you search for after effects and masking then uh, you can find plenty of tutorials showing how to do that so i will not go into these details so i'll just say thank you for watching and please subscribe for our youtube channel so you can see when uh, new things arrives or if we are updating something thank you for watching